Hey, Ron here from Military Images with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, it occurs to me that um, coming up with a piece of Civil War Thanksgiving art for social media posts has become something of a ritual for me. Um, I'm pretty unique, something I haven't used uh, very often to post on the various social media platforms. And so uh, this year, I found uh, this 1863 in Harper's Weekly magazine on December 5th, 1863. Uh, I'm not sure that I used it before. I may have at some point in the past, but uh, it, it appeals to me. It's a, a wonderful Thomas Nast engraving. What I didn't think about or what I haven't thought about in the past was, you know, when you're looking at Harper's Weekly, there's always a story behind the images that you see. And because I'm in a hurry and looking for a piece of art, I typically don't read the story that goes with the picture. So um, I thought, well, let me take a look at the story that goes with Thomas Nast's wonderful piece of art. And so I read it and I won't share it with you. It's pretty syrupy. It's a uh, fictional story of a flaxen haired young woman, uh, a fiance. I, she's writing invitations to a party. Um, her beau, uh, her soon-to-be husband, a Union Army major is there. Uh, they are regretting that he can't be with her on Thanksgiving Day because he has to get back to his regiment and he will have Thanksgiving dinner with the troops. So there's the expected tearful goodbye um, and um, he goes off into uh, the world, uh, gets on a train, and then soon after, word comes to the house and to the flaxen-haired woman that there has been a horrible tragedy. The train has derailed and crashed, and everyone aboard has been killed. She and her family are all upset, naturally upset at the loss and as they are in their intense moment of grief, who shows up at the door but the major? Apparently, the reports, the initial reports were wrong. Her fiance is alive, and it's a happy Thanksgiving after all. So that's the story. Um, I'm not going to read it to you because it is just so the Victorian language and the sugar coating is just way over the top for the modern sensibilities of those of us today. But that story got me thinking about, gosh, what other text out there have I missed? What other Civil War Thanksgiving texts have I missed? And that led me to look up Abraham Lincoln's proclamation, the one that he issued on October 3rd, 1863, it's not long, and this one I do want to read to you because it struck me as being um, pretty powerful. It's coming on the heels of the victories of Gettysburg and Vicksburg, uh, and uh, Lincoln seems to be in a fairly positive frame of mind. So rather than me opine, let me share it with you. I'm going to read it to you, and you can come up with your own conclusions. Here we go. Uh, it's titled His Proclamation, uh, Proclamation for a Day of Thanksgiving, October 3rd, 1863. Here we go. The year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften the heart, which is habitually insensible 
to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to foreign states to invite and provoke their aggressions, peace has been preserved with all nations. Order has been maintained. The laws have been respected and obeyed and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict. While that theater has been greatly contracted by the advancing armies and navies of the Union, needful diversions of wealth and strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The ax has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines as well of iron and coal as the precious metals have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor is permitted to expect the continuance of years with large increase of freedom. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, has nevertheless remembered mercy. And it seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as one with heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do, therefore, invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our benef beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that, while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him, for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged and fervently implore the interposition of the almighty hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. So there you have it, the Thanksgiving proclamation, the message of Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, in October 1863. Thank you. I wish a happy Thanksgiving to you, your families, your friends, and everyone. Take care. And until the next time, happy trails.